Hey guys, welcome to another video. Um, sorry I haven't uploaded in a little while. Um, I've actually been pretty busy uh, with, uh, yeah, this stack of goodies here. Um, and just having a lot of headaches trying to uh, repair some of these things that are coming my way. Um, yeah, this is a, I believe this one is a 1070. Yeah, no, no, this is a 980 Ti, sorry. Uh, no, it is a 1070. I, I don't know, whatever. Um, but as you can see here, yeah. Uh, this can actually be fixed, it can. But it will take a lot of work, um, a lot of um, masking, a lot of um, primarily what this means um, is you would I would have to grind down this area here, expose the layers and separate the layers so that they're not shorting, uh, replace this cap here, of course, and rebuild the circuitry rebuild the uh, resistors um, uh, new pads you know etc um, so yes it, it can be done but it's just very labor intensive and if I wanted to do this for myself I would if it's for a customer no this would be uh, something that I would advise not to because it would cost more to fix this <laughs> then the card is actually worse so um yeah this is just fun times you know i've got a mess over here i gotta do some cleaning up but um okay so the video um today i just wanted to uh talk about uh, or talk to you guys that are perhaps thinking about getting into bga rework you know fixing your own um, graphics cards, motherboards, you know, you want to get into the hobby. Um, I can give you some, some small tips. I am myself still learning. Um, but, um, I have learned, um, substantially, you know, from my own mistakes, uh, and also from watching guys on YouTube, um, uh, you know, guys that like Chris Fix from Germany, um, uh, Northwest Repair, uh, that guy's pretty pretty knowledgeable. So I, if you haven't heard about them, I would strongly recommend uh, you check them out. Um, very very knowledgeable people. But um, so where to begin? Well, um, you know, to be honest with you, the number one rule that I have and that I've always had even be, before I started this uh, journey is do not work on someone else's stuff. Don't do that. Um, start with your own graphics cards. Um, I started with this. This is my um, my old uh, memory chip that just fell off of this. Okay, whatever. Um, my old trusty RX 470. This is a four gigabyte card. Um, I actually started working and just experimenting on this card. Uh, in the process of doing so, I killed it. Um, not not killed it, but uh, yeah, I did. I did. I did kill it. Um, I did. I, I made a mess because I was not using the proper flux. Um, I was just starting to um, learn how to solder properly. Um, I was not using a preheater, um, so it was just noobish stuff. So I made a lot. I made a lot of mistakes with the SMDs, and it was just a mess. Um, I have since fixed it. It took me a while. You know, I, I it has no real value to be honest. Uh, like if I were to sell it, I wouldn't get much money for it. But um, it has sentimental value because it has been with me for such a long time, and I I wanted to get it fixed. So finally got it all running. Uh, it's a nice little card. I got my own color theme and. See that little AMD thing logo that I painted on there. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, that's the number one rule as far as I'm concerned. Don't start with people's stuff. Um, always, uh, you know, start with your own your own devices. Um, and 
check out those videos. Check out people on YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a good source of information. Um, Google. Use Google a lot. Um, and uh, just pay attention. You know, take take advice, take tips from, from these people. Um, and um, AliExpress. Yeah. Um, you will you will find um, a lot of good stores on AliExpress where you can get uh, Flux. So how about we get started with that, okay? Um, there is a lot to be said about Flux, okay? Um, this is original Am Amtec. Uh, this is the stuff that I, I like to use. Um, some uh, people don't like it because if you leave it on for too long, it starts to turn brown and kind of burn, you know what I mean? And then it kind of, yeah, darkens the pads. But that's actually the user's fault. It's not the, the stuff, the, the, the actual um, flux. You should be um, on top of making sure that as you're working, you're keeping your work area clean and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, and the reason why I'm, I, I want to bring this up because um, this here. This is knockoff Amtec Flux from China. Th don't get me wrong. I bought this one from China too. But this stuff is, um, you know, NC559. This is also NC559, but this is actual Amtec. Um, this stuff is hideous. And even though it looks the same consistently, like, 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 um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if consistently is the right word, but this stuff right here is garbage. It smells like tree resin, uh, re resin, yeah, resin. Um, it has this funky smell to it, and if you let it dry, if you don't clean it up soon enough, it'll dry up, and then it becomes solid, like, like, um, like tree sap. And then you have to heat it up and to be able to remove it. This stuff is not Amtec. I can tell you that. This is just some Chinese knockoff. Um, I do use it for when I do um, core reballing. If I, if I had to pick up the core uh, and I have to use a lot of, you know, flux, I'd rather not use my good stuff. I'd rather just use this stuff and make sure that it doesn't dry. But so, in other words, be careful on Ali, AliExpress. Um, where you buy this stuff uh, because uh, it's you can be getting some really trashy flux and believe me flux makes a huge difference when you're doing um, rework when you're when when you're soldering and you, you know you're uh, reballing things like that uh, this stuff ma make sure this stuff is your best friend and you don't want to have crap flux you want to have good stuff um, so my advice on when you're buying this on on AliExpress, if you're going to AliExpress, is to read the reviews, read what people are saying about this stuff. Um, if you if you read some people saying that the stuff smells funky, it dries up, it hardens up, it's this stuff right here, this junk. Um, you can still use it, but it's 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 just it's 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 hideous. Um, my other brand that I recommend is this one here too. Uh, if you happen to run across this, it's made in China, but this is really good stuff. It's a little bit lighter than Amtec. Um, this is really good. Um, uh, you, um, it has, uh, you, you, don't, you don't need to clean it. Uh, if, you, if you use enough for what you need, uh, it's a no clean uh, flux. So this is really, really, really good stuff if you can find it. I actually didn't get it from AliExpress. I bought it here in my country for my, for my uh, uh, electronic shop. You know, so I, I really really like this stuff. But it's it's a little more expensive than Amtec, and so this is where I get my this is where I put my Amtec my my flux there. Um, and also um, another thing that I would recommend that you that you get um, is uh, solder paste. Um, and the reason why I recommend that you get solder paste, make sure you get the 183. Uh, you can you can get this solder paste uh, from Ulk. 
um, and but but the thing of the thing about this solder paste is that it, it's a low melt solder, solder paste, so it'll melt at 138 Celsius. The problem with that is that if you if you use this for reballing, for example, if you want to, uh, I, I use solder paste to do all my uh, memory reballs. So, for example, um, those are those are needing to be reballed. These are the ones that I reballed. So I can just show you here real quick. Um, if you look at this chip here, this is not this stuff here. It's not this stuff here. Um, I don't really like this stuff, to be honest. It's, it's a little messy for my taste. Um, this is a little bit lengthier to do, a little bit lengthier, but it's very effective if you do it right. Um, maybe later I will make an, a video specifically, um, if you guys like this video, depending how this goes, um, and I will show you how to reball and get perfect, perfect balls um, using solder paste um, and get it right the first time, every single time. Um, so yeah, that's solder paste, but I strongly recommend that you also get yourself some solder paste um, mechanic is a good brand um, so make sure you get it from a reputable uh, site on Aliexpress like just read read the reviews uh, you know that that'll tell you a lot what people are saying and stuff and this stuff usually comes in baggies like um, uh, from the manufacturer so it looks you know and, and it works pretty legit like it should so yeah mechanic is a good brand for solder paste um, 183 don't get the 138 because um, uh, 138 Celsius because if you get low melt for example and you happen to be working uh, let's just say on this 2080 Ti which is the devil I've been fighting with this thing trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with it um, and you use this low melt for example okay uh, to reball your memory chips and then it turns out that um, you need to reball the core for whatever reason or do some uh, other work here on the, on, the, uh, on the faces or whatever the case may be. Um, this right here will melt <laughs> and you not even know it and could cause uh, a short circuit or just kill the chip when you hit that power button and the whole time you didn't know about it. So this low melt stuff, um, there are particular uh, uh, cases where this is um, usable. For example, if, um, if, you, if you're working on faces like this, for example, and you have um, electrolytic capacitors. Oh, I don't have any here. Hold on. I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you what I mean. Yes, right here. Okay. Um, I got a fix this thing um, you see how close these things like you have this capacitors here okay um, and, and if you're applying for example 400 uh, Celsius heat um, to remove one of these faces here these things will blow up on you they'll, they'll bulge up and possibly pop so um, this is where this stuff comes in uh, you could you know, if it's just a, a, a face that went out, you could just use low heat uh, and be able to get away with uh, doing a quick um, uh, rework of that face with low solder, uh, low temperature soldering uh, paste. Um, you know, so this this could help you in that aspect. That just is, that's just an example. Like in areas that are heat sensitive, this this is good to have. So I buy it. I have it. Um, also, make sure you get yourself some masking if you're going to be doing some. Um, uh, oh, you, this this is just you, you have to get some masking if you're going to be doing some rework. Um, I, I recommend the green stuff. I bought this because it was cheap um, and it works. It, it, it works OK, but um, I recommend the green one because the green one um, cures faster than the black one. It's just the UV rays uh, work better. So, yeah. Um, Kaisi uh, it's, it's a good brand I like this so um, yeah so yeah solder paste good flux um, that's you know um, 
some of the, the tips that I can give you. Also get yourself leaded um, uh, solder. You know, make sure it's leaded. It is, it, don't get the lead-free solder. Don't do that because it will make your life uh, a nightmare. Uh, this stuff right here, um, a few things to be said about this. Um, most of these cards, because everybody wants to go green, um, come with lead-free solder. And that stuff cracks real easy. Um, it just doesn't have the longevity that, like, if you notice cars from like 20 years ago, they're still around today. Uh, and you're wondering why these newer cars don't last even five, six years before they start giving you trouble. That's uh, because back in the days we used to use this here and this stuff is a lot more durable it's a lot it has it has a little more play to it like um it's not as easy to crack uh, that's the right i think the lamest term that i or the lamest words that i can use so make sure you get yourself uh leaded solder uh don't don't get the so the lead free stuff because that's junk don't do that to yourself um also um, this is the uh, the light, the UV light that I um, that I bought from AliExpress, and it works great. It's called Relife. Um, it's not that expensive, so yeah, it does. It's USB, so you can just hook it up to your computer, um, and it it works. It does what it's supposed to do. So yeah. Also, your um, Hot air station, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, I keep my hot air at five or six. I hardly ever go to eight. I keep it here because I also use uh, my uh, preheater in combination. My preheater is always set to 280 Celsius. Um, and that gets the board hot to about around 130, 140 Celsius, which is where I, you know, where you really want it to be in combination with hot air, uh, so that way you don't spend too much time on a particular IC and potentially damage other or move other stuff around it or you know whatever because of too much heat. So um, this stuff here doesn't have to be very fancy. Just get one that you can afford. Um, look at the reviews, what they're saying. This one here in my country, it's about 150 bucks, um, and it works. It works good. It works great. Um, it actually shuts off when you put it in its holder. A lot of these things don't. You have to fight and kind of like, like, you know, like, let me, let me just show you what I mean. Okay. Okay, now the machine is going, right? The hot air is going. You see the temperature rising. Okay. When you put it here, it's supposed to, it's supposed to go on... There you go, okay. It's supposed to like um, cool down and just go on standby. A lot of these machines, this here, doesn't work properly. You, you'll, you'll see that for yourselves. Don't be discouraged. Don't think that there's anything wrong or you bought a cheap one. It's just the nature of the beast. This happens a lot with a lot of these machines. I don't know why that is. It's just a magnet, uh, the mag magnetic field there that just doesn't quite line up. This one here, I got lucky and it works. 100% of the times whenever I shut put that thing there it's it, it shuts off. So yeah, get yourself a good um, an affordable uh, hot air station and um, Yeah, so that's for that there um, I keep mine at 400 Celsius or 375 depending on what I'm doing also um, When it comes to your soldering st your soldering station here uh, Make sure you get some good tips. This is old already. I, I need to buy a new one let me just kind of like yeah there you go uh, I have to I have had to sand this down to kind of uh, make it so that I can use it with what I'm doing I just need to get new tips I haven't just I just haven't had the time but make sure you get a good one you know it doesn't have to be very fancy it's just something that is uh, affordable and reliable just again look it up do some google searches you know what people are saying and whatnot um because believe me that the hobby is you, you will like it once you get into uh you know fixing these things and getting into this arena it's 
it's uh, it's very entertaining and very satisfying when you are able to fix one of these things. Um, this is another thing. This is very important. This is your hot your um, your preheater. Um, this one is by Gordak. Uh, it's Chinese stuff, but um, I can recommend this one. Uh, ceramic. Um, there's some rumors out there that this type of heating here will bend the PCB and blah blah blah. I have been using this stuff with all my cars that I have worked on, that I have worked with. Uh, no such thing. I have never experienced that. So I, I don't know where that rumor came from. Again, I think it has to do a lot with the people that are using it rather than the, than the equipment. So that's the um, the truth about that. And like I said, I keep this at 280, um, 280 Celsius. Um, so yeah, that's for that. Also, get, make sure you get yourself a K-type thermal couple you know to be able to monitor the the actual temperature on the board rather than what this is telling you so yeah this will be very handy this is by uh, nicety also by from aliexpress and this is pretty damn accurate like this is this is this is good stuff so i'm ha pretty happy with this one here i had um, a few ones before this and they were not so good but this does what it's supposed to so yeah a uh, good preheater and uh, K-type thermocouples. But now, as I am telling you all these things, I realize that perhaps you guys won't be able to get all this stuff all at once. But what I am doing is just pointing, just giving you tips like you can do this slowly. You know, the first thing that I would do is get yourself a soldering station and a hot air station. Uh, these two things, this is how I started. Um, make sure that you um, get a uh, some good screwdrivers, um, like this is from um, iFixit. Uh, these right here are, are they're okay. Um, I'll order some some stuff as opposed to arrive here um, anytime. But uh, this this have carried me through through all my reworks and all my um, fixes. Um, also a suction for lifting up um, uh, your memory chips. So, you know, you put this down and believe me, it's, it's, it's heat resistant. This thing is pretty strong. So yeah, it'll, it'll lift the IC off the, off the board. You don't have to get it. You can just start with this here. Simple. Um, this is for later if you want to go with something like this. Um, okay. Another thing is that later on you will, you will, if you want to get into more, um, uh, advanced repairs, you will. And I recommend that you get a good power supply. This one only goes up to five amps. It's enough for what I'm for so far for what I have been doing. It's by R N D Lab. Um, it's okay. It's actually good quality. I'm pretty happy with it. I made my own contraptions here. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, make sure you get yourself a good power supply later on down the road. Down the road, um, and also a thermal camera this is by unit unit t i got this from aliexpress um from unit t's uh, dedicated store on aliexpress and this works great uh type c connector so it, hook up, it hooks up right to your phone and you can just download the app uh, from um uh, on your phone just download the app from unit t and it has different functions like different colors of um how do like like um, how do I say this? Different ways of, of translating temperatures. So you, you will see. You know, once you plug this in and you get the app, it's really nice to have. Uh, very handy. These two things here go together, and with these two things, man, like the whole world opens up even further for you and your repairs because then you'll be able to find those hard to find shorts you know and things like that um so yeah that, those two things are very good to have um also make sure you have some type of order um you know with your um the way you set your tools you know things like that now another important tool that you need to have this one here is actually cheap <laughs> i bought this in my country uh where i live this is actually cheap but it works 
um, it's pretty accurate, decently accurate, um, and it's carried me through again, you know, through all my reworks and whatnot. Maybe later on I'll get something different, but uh, I just don't need to. This does it does everything that I needed to do. Uh, but you can start with a cheap one, an affordable one. Cheap doesn't mean bad. It's just something affordable of a, of a decent brand. You don't have to go over with flood with what is it called? Um, uh, I forget the name of that expensive yellow brand. You don't have to go with something crazy like that. You could if you have the money, but you know. Um, but this this is important. It is important that you get accurate, reliable um, uh, numbers out of this. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, this will be necessary. Um, if you want to also do. Um, uh, reworks like for example you get a crack PCB and you know you, you want to get into more advanced uh, fixing fixings uh, I got this from again Aliexpress it has three speeds there you go I don't know is that focusing yeah there you go and this works really well it works really well um, actually when I bought it it came with um oh geez i'm sorry guys you have, have to see all this horror um <laughs> it came with these 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 tips here you know really nice but i had to order this this stuff right here separately um for uh for this for this thing here these are different tips um you want to have a variety of them um, because you may, yeah, you just never know when you're going to need, and some are more, uh, aggressive than others. So yeah, it's a bit, this is very nice to have. Um, the tip, the tip that I keep on here, um, just to get me started is this one here. Um, you know, this is the kind of like the standard one that I use. Uh, then I go with something either more aggressive or less aggressive. And this charges up using your USB, uh, you know, port on your PC. So really nice, really nice to have. Also, get yourself some oxide clean. Um, it, it, this is for cars, but you will encounter some graphics cards that have that green oxide on them. This stuff works wonders. You can start with this, uh, just spray a little bit on the Q-tip and then use the Q-tip to, you know, remove some of the oxide. Um, typically I would recommend that you just reflow the parts that, um, that have the um, oxidation. But if you notice that when you, when you use this, the uh, oxidation goes away and, and it shows the, the solder and the solder looks in good condition. And then you start tug, tugging on the, uh, on the SMDs and they seem to be in place, like they're not going anywhere, then I will leave it alone and just, that would be good enough for you. Um, you also will need some thermal pads. Um, uh, I know I'm showing you guys a lot. This is a lot to take in, but um, it comes with the territory. It's this is not a cheap hobby, um, especially if you want to do it professionally. I do it more as a hobby slash professional, you know, type of deal. More of a hobby, actually. Um, I just I love doing these things. Um, let's see what else, what else? Oh yeah. You know, make sure you get something like this, you know, if you can, um, have some order for your memory chips, um, you know, make sure you label stuff. Um, uh, make sure you have some faces here, like have my faces here, different faces, uh, from on, on semiconductors, international rectifiers, alpha and omega, um, and so on. So just have some order in your life. Um, paper, you know, uh, it's very uh, like cleaning paper. Q-tips, you will be needing Q-tip, uh, Q-tips. And um, alcohol, I recommend 95%, uh, uh, the better. This is, this, this, this is not 75%, this is just, I reused this bottle. This is actually 99% isopropanol. Um, but uh, 95 will also work. So, yeah. Um, and um, to doing also your wicks, you will need some wicks, some copper wicks for lifting up uh, solder off uh, chips and doing cleanup. 
Um, this stuff right here, it's, uh, I believe this one is three millimeters. I can't remember exactly what the, what the number is here. It should say on here. Um, no, it's actually 1.5, 1.5. Okay, but, um, but this, is, this is really all I need and it gets the job done. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, you will see also on AliExpress for reballing uh, memory chips, you will see these things here, okay? Um, and and let me let me just show you another one, okay? A lot of YouTubers, a lot of techie shops prefer to use these right here, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this is actually a lot quicker if you can master this. Um, I like this one. I like to use it, but I just don't like the mess. Like you see those little balls. Sometimes uh, it depends on the user. I'm, I'm, I, sh I should get better at it, but um, this is one way to do reballing on your memory chips or your GPUs. I like to do it this way with solder paste. Um, so you will be needing also some stencils. Um, I have a collection of stencils that I use. Um, so yeah, uh, in the what I was telling you, this is my 4070 Ti that I uh, uh, came in with a crack. And let me just show you what it looks like now. Um, uh, so you will have to use some resin, also some some um, um, uh, epoxy, epoxy glue, some good stuff after you do the masking and you know your rewiring and everything. Um, make sure you have epoxy because just the masking by itself is not going to do it. You will need to reinforce that uh, that crack. Um, otherwise, forget it. It's just it's going to fail again. Um, uh, and cars like this that you repair, make sure you tell people or, your, or remind yourself that they need to be installed vertically. They can, they can no longer be installed horizontally like this because this crack right here will reopen. Um, it's just inevitable. It will only be a matter of time. Um, so yeah, this is just a collection of cars that I have fixed. They're just sitting here. Um, but um, yeah, guys, I, you know, I really um, also, you, you could use just an open system like this one here um, to start with, you know, have a, a riser like this. And here you can check your um, um, your your values, like your voltages, and you know make sure that everything um, you have all your all your voltages. Um, of course, after you have checked for resistances and make sure there's no shorts or anything like that. So you can start with an open system like that. I would recommend that you have a motherboard set up here on the open, and with the riser you can bring here and have the card here, you know, on here in front of you instead of having it there. For me, this this has worked just fine so i i just stuck with it i mean you know but yeah you could just have the the setup like that um but yeah back to this thing here um these are the uh the stencils that you will need for doing your memory reballing these are for gddr5 and here are gddr6 and this also covers gddr6x you can find these on aliexpress um, as well so and again this is where um, solder paste comes in um, you will be using solder paste to do your reballing of your memory chips if you would like me to make a video to show you how I use solder paste uh, with these stencils here let me know in the comment section I will be more than happy to do so if you guys want to uh, get into this hobby here um, yeah I would love to do that for you guys but um, yeah, for me, uh, direct heat is the way to go. I know some people, I have seen some videos of people saying, stay away from this stuff, this stuff sucks. It's not the stuff, it's the people. They're, they're, they're not doing it right, and I will show you. I can show you how to do this right. Every single time is actually real easy. Um, the key is timing. You cannot allow this to, after you take the heat off of it, you have to separate the two. You cannot wait too long. Um, that's it. That's that's the key to it. Um, and I'll, I I can show you how to do that in a in another video. But um, 
yeah anyway guys so i'm just just wanted to show you you know what i'm working with uh just so, so you can guys get kind of an idea um of uh you know for yourselves also try to get like a, a fan like this just to get the fumes away from you uh, if you're in a small room you need to have a fume extractor that goes outside um, i'm in a big room here and i actually have a pretty good air circulation here so um this this works okay um but yeah you probably want to have something better than that actually uh, for me it just it works it works just fine um Hopefully I didn't forget to um, include anything, you know, more more things that are important, things that you should consider. Um, but yeah, to start with, just make sure you start with a good soldering station, hot air station, your PC setup, you know, how you want to um, have your computer for testing the cards, you know, after you have done your routine checkups for shorts and resistances and such. Um, and I will start resoldering. Like I, I'll show you guys how to use this, if you want me to. Uh, this is actually, I love this over the uh, the other one that I showed the big one. This thing right here is yeah my choice for cores and for uh, memory chips. Um, how to do my reballing using solder paste. But um, yeah, this this one here, by the way, this is uh, RX fifty seven hundred. Um, it's got a dead core, uh, uh, short on pecs. It has no memory. Uh, 1.8 is gone. Um, it's just that's just the way it came in, and um, it's very sad, uh, very sad story. But uh, I don't know why I have it here. I should throw it there, you know, where it belongs. But yeah, this thing here, this 2080 Ti, um, I. Check, I, I replaced this buck converter converter here uh, because it was glowing and it was showing that as, as faulty. So I did that in the car. I brought it to life. I brought it to life. I put the cooler, I put it together, um, put the cooler on it and everything, restarted the card. It would not work again. Um, and then it showed me that this son of a gun here, that one there in the middle, uh, it's shorted now, so I have to replace that one. Um, this card, when it came in, it was filthy. It had a lot of corrosion. A lot of the SMDs were just a mess. So this card is taking me a while to uh, to where you see it now. So yeah, it's I, I still have to work on it. It needs more work to be done. But um, yeah, that's what I've been doing lately, guys. I will. Continue to post and bring you guys more videos. Um, I've just been busy, really. That's my excuse. But uh, I won't forget. I won't forget you guys. Uh, so I have. I do have more content coming up here soon. So just stay tuned. Uh, and that's it. That's all I have, guys. I just wanted to show you what I'm working with here, and maybe this is helpful to someone. If you guys have questions, shoot me some comments, some questions in the comment section, and I'll be more than happy to reply. Uh, this is all for now. Uh, hit thumbs up if you liked the video. If you didn't like it for whatever reason, you know what to do. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.